drinking my tea, enjoying myself. Howdy, guys. Today we're going to talk about PS3 Media Server. Pretty straightforward application. I quite like it over the other UPnP DLNA Media Server applications. It works. Its overhead isn't too bad, as long as you have a good processor on your media server. It's a great example of a piece of software that's free, built on Java, which can be a bit of a headache. Sometimes it can break, but I hadn't had an issue with streaming 1080p test content that I've made in After Effects. I haven't had an issue with multiple file formats I've tested. It works pretty damn well. It uses FFmpeg as a transcoding which we all know can be pretty damn powerful, pretty configurable. And there's a lot of lot of information out there on how to configure it properly too. Today we're just gonna talk about PS3 Media Server, which is a great, great backend to say using XBMC or something like Myth TV that will use UPnP. And you can set it up, I'm pretty sure with Wompcast, which I will do my research on that because I've been streaming Wompcast to my Roku. Well, let's get started with, so we're gonna, once you have PS3 Media Server installed, by default, it will not run in the taskbar. I'm going to double click that little PS3 icon. Now if you had say something like your PS3 running, or a 360, or another UPnP or DLNA enabled device, it will detect it here. For now, since there's nothing running, it's going to fail detecting any of the renderers. Traces, it's going to just tell you exactly what it's been doing. I'm going to click General Configuration. I like to check start minimize. By default, it's not starting minimized. Now, if say you have a headless server running as your media dump, your media library, you can install as a Windows service and never have to worry about starting it up automatically. You can tell it to check auto automatically for updates. The updates are quite frequent, but not too frequent. So you can do manually, but pretty much the version they have right now is pretty damn stable. On your network settings advanced, you could tell it to force a certain controller. Now that depends on what you're running. My main network is wireless, but for the test I was doing to stream 1080p 10-bit content, I was using built-in NIC. And yes, that is an ICS enabled DHCP address. Force IP of the server. That has to be the IP of the server. So if it's this internal NIC, the IP would be 192.168.1371. Now, if it's the wireless network card, meaning the main network of the house, that would be the IP of the computer hosting the media content. Force port of the server, you can tell it to be something different other than default 5001. IP filter, you can tell it to only stream to certain devices. Say you only want to stream to your TV, your smart enabled TV, or to your phone, or to say, one of your consoles or one of your other PCs. It's pretty handy. Maximum bandwidth, if you're on a wired network, you can leave that at zero. If you know your infrastructure is good, if you have a good strong gigabit router, gigabit cards that are actually not crappy, not software based gigabit, which I know a lot of quote unquote older gigabit network cards are actually 10 100 cards that are overclocked or hacked at the factory from what I've heard. Now if you're on a wireless, I recommend, and a lot of people recommend this too, is they set it to 125 or 150 maximum. Because a lot of times the wireless will just bog down and crash and it's terrible. Now streaming 1080p content or even 720p content on wireless is a little bit sluggish. Unless everything has wireless in, then you shouldn't really worry too much about the overhead. But for example, the PS3 has a wireless G which is terrible. So if you try to stream wireless 720p content over that, forget about it. You could probably do it if you tell it to transcode hard enough if you lower the quality, but that's going to require a powerful PC. Now advanced HTTP and system settings, I leave that at default. You don't really have to mess with that. Default render, you could set that to a myriad of devices they have in here. I just leave it at PS3 because it is the better choice for a living room media player, in my opinion. I mean, if you have the money to build an HTPC that doesn't have a hard drive really in it, just a solid state MSATA card, or a small SSD for say XBMC or Myth or a myriad of other 
front ends, you can tell it to do that too. And PS3 Media Server is a perfect example of what to use. There's not much to it. Now we're going to click Navigation and Share Settings. I leave the tops as defaults. You can tell it to generate thumbnails. You could leave it off. I mean, depending on how fast your device is. I've noticed on my PS3 and my Xbox, it sometimes slows down or causes to hang for some reason. It is bizarre. Unless my MP4s actually have the thumbnail built in there, which is a beautiful thing about the MP4 container format. Now under navigation and parsing settings. Now what's cool is PS3 Media Server will browse compressed archives. I think that's nifty. I mean, say you want to save space and you're compressing whatever video files you have. You can tell it to hide the video setting, transcoding folders, all that stuff. You can tell it to hide extensions, which I do. I don't like seeing my extensions. I don't like seeing the transcoding engine names. You can tell it to hide empty media, non-media folders that will slow down browsing. Because it will search folders that are empty in those. You can tell it to show your iTunes library. Yes, PS3 Media Server can stream music. I personally prefer using the FUBAR UPnP, which is another video. You can do it with this as well as an all-in-one. That's all up to you. You can tell it to hide the cache folder. It does cache a little bit to be able to stream. Pretty good stuff. Now adding shared folders is drop that easy in this program. Just click the little plus folder icon, browse to said location, wherever you have your stuff. Done. Transcoding settings, you can leave this at defaults because it's already set up pretty good. It's not maximum quality, it's comparable quality. I mean, it's almost 720p quality if you have 720p. 1080p still looked pretty damn good with the default settings, streamed pretty well. There wasn't much overhead on my PC. And as you can see, you're under all these. You can't set these really, except FFmpeg, which you can tell it the, how many threads it uses, the quality scale, and you know, if you go on the internet and look up the FFmpeg configuration, there's a lot of information on that, a lot more than it could squeeze into a video. Encoder, you can tell it to use multiple CPU cores. If you have a PowerPoint of CPU and you don't mind, you can do that. Pretty much, I would recommend leaving most of these at defaults because it's already pretty much set up out of the box to work, which is beautiful. Now, under audio, you can tell it to automatically auto under FFmpeg audio you can tell it to resample 44.1 or 48 kilohertz audio say you have something that's 96 kilohertz for some reason it'll resample it down or up sample but I haven't I have nothing that's 32 or 22.1 the rest of these you can leave them alone this video is very straightforward it's just it a little bit of hand holding to show you that there isn't much to worry about UPnP streaming with movies and TV shows or whatever audio or video formats you have to stream. That is pretty much it. I'm going to have a link for PS3 Media Server in the comments. Any other questions about this, you guys can email me, which currently is maxhacks at gmail.com. That will be in the comments as well. Soon, I will have a professional email address. Soon, guys. Just at the moment, funds. Alright, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. And see you guys later.